Welcome again to ITSC 1345, Competency 3, and this is Chapter 4. Um, this chapter is about cursors. Um, you've heard me reference the idea of a cursor as a pickup, transport, and delivery mechanism. Well, as with, as with any program or any language, there will be terms and terminology and acronyms that go along with everything we're doing. Now, I use the terminology uh, pick up, transport, and deliver. So as we get into this, this process of a cursor, there will be some technical definitions that will encompass what the program is doing. So there is what they call open, fetch, and close. So those are those three terminologies, the actual words that you will use when you write the code. So the open, the fetch, and the close are that, you know, pick up, transport, and delivery mechanism. And you have to actually turn the program on and turn the program off. And the reason you have to turn it on and turn it off is that this is effectively a sub-program that you are running. Now, this sub-program can be used by other programs that you're working with. So you have to be sure that if you turn something on, you have to be sure to turn it off. Otherwise, it's going to be hanging up there in the background. And because it's running in the background, it can in inadvertently do something you don't want it to. So you always have to remember, like anything, once you turn it on, you got to turn it off. Otherwise, you may have some collateral damage that you have to deal with. So what we're looking for is this process. Now, anytime you do SQL, when you do the select from where, that is a type of cursor because it's going and retrieving information. But you're not really giving that thing a name. And you guys uh, that have used SQL know that every time you run a statement, you got to type it in. You cannot call that item so it's not like a stored program that you have to call and use. So there are what they call implicit cursors and explicit cursors. One is a defined item that you can give a name to and use. The other one is not defined, and it's like an anonymous item that every time you use it, you use it without giving it a name. So we're going to look at, at the area. Now, remember I told you that you pick up and deliver. Now, in that example I, I previously used, it was like a, either a taxi or a school bus. Well, there is a technical name for that space that you have to reserve or use for the movement of the information, and that's called content area. So there is a process called content area, and you have to, well, you have to kind of tell the system, oh, by the way, I'm going to pick up one individual, so I need for you to set one area aside. Oh, by the way, I'm going to go and pick up a busload of people. So you have to set a busload area aside. So as you open up this cursor, you have to kind of also give it some directions, some instructions on what it's going to do. So there is a formal process that you have to build. Now, uh, we talked about the block earlier, where you have the block, the begin, uh, the exception, and the end. Now, the cursor is part of that process where you have to, within this process, the cursor, when, when you have the declare section in your block, the declare is where you list the parameters, the variables, everything you're going to use to that will use in the executable part. Because, you know, you have to set aside parameters variables that are going to be used in the actual code. So the cursor is that process, once again, that picks up, delivers, and that is encoded in the declare. So remember, you have the declare, the begin, the exception, and the end. And this is the classic block structure that supports all of PL SQL. Now, in the declare section, this is where you start itemizing the items that you will need to be able to do your work. Now, the cursor will reside here. So the cursor is one of those areas 
that you use. Now, when you get into the begin area, also you have, this is where you do the open, I'll take it open, and you have the fetch, and you have the close. Actually, fetch goes in here. So you have the open, fetch, and close scenarios that you have to use. Now, there's, there's that example I gave previously that if you look on the keyboard, the number O and the letter O are very close together. So in this process, in the exception, when you're doing this, you have to tell it what to do if you find an element that is not working with that structure. And that's where the exception comes in. Now, the exception is that process that will itemize or detail the issues that are outside the parameters at the upper and lower limits of what you're looking for. Now, um, getting back to that pickup delivery mechanism, and I told you that content area. Well, in order to expedite the process, you would like to have that space reserved before you call it, because if you go and extract data and then you come back and, oops, there's no place to put it, you have to build the place and that takes time. There is a process called bulk processing. So bulk processing is that tool that you establish to develop the area that you will need to warehouse the information you're going to extract. So it's basically a process. It's a predefined area. So effectively, what you're telling Oracle and SQL and PLC, well, by the way, I'm going to run a, a program, and when I do, I'm going to have to set aside this area because I need to put it somewhere while I use it. And the bulk processing is that tool that allows you to set aside uh, this area that will hold the data, data while you're working with it. Uh, now, in any item that you do, there are pretty much generic, I wouldn't call them errors. Well, I guess you can call them errors. There, will be, there are predefined conditions that usually exist in any, in any item that you're doing. Common errors, generic errors. Usually that you only will see that. Like the zero and the O. Those are pretty, those are pretty common. You know you're going to get them. So what are you going to do with them? Uh, as you develop the exceptions, there are some known events. Like when you, when you run data, at some point, there'll be this item where you know you're going you're to run out of data. So what you do is you, de you develop a looping mechanism. And this looping mechanism will terminate when there's no more data. And then that's how you exit. Or you can do where you develop an area and all of a sudden you go, oops, I got more than what I have spaces for. We have too much stuff. So you can also develop an exit process that will allow you to deal with too much data. Uh, there's also the issue of, oops, I'm dividing by zero, or oops, I have too much duplicate data. So there are some, this is a pre-designed solutions to preconceived problems, generic information. Now, there are also these areas where you may have something that is outside established parameters that, oops, where the hell this come from? I don't know where it's at. And you also have to develop a mechanism to do that. Now, there's also this, this issue of conditional. When this condition exists, I want you to do this. For example, in that zero and O, if that's a common event, you go, well, I know that happens all the time, so if you see this, I want you to do this. And you extract the data because you know it's a known error or a common error. So you have those items where you know you have common mistakes that happen and you get to trap those or get them out. And then you have those scenarios where you have unknown events that you don't know what to do with that you have to capture and extract. So the cursor, once again, is that tool that will open an item, fetch an item, and close an item. Now within that fetching mechanism, you have to develop a looping process. Because remember, it's going to be a recursive event. So as you're having this recursive event and you create a loop, there are different types of loops that you can use. There's the 
when there is a simple, so there's different types of looping mechanism, and each of those looping constructs also have, I guess, issues that are specific to the type of looping mechanism that you're using. So you have the open, the fetch, the looping mechanism that you're going to use, and then you always have to be sure to close that loop. So you begin a loop, and you close a loop, and then you close the cursor, and you always have to have some kind of exit. Now, if there's a process that how do you itemize, how do you actually print the error that you're trying to catch, there's something that you have to really know. It's called DBMS underscore output, uh, output, output line, output line, okay? So what you do is you tell it, when I capture this, I want you to export this and I want you to print out what the issue was. So basically what this does, it captures that event and it prints it out for you so you can see it. Because if you have a mistake and you have an exception and you extract it, you can go to the next record, but you have to be able to extract that event and look at it. And the output, uh, the DBMS output process is that process that will allow you to visualize the item that's having problems. So in, in completing this process, we're going to say that there are implicit and explicit cursors. The cursor does have a content area that you have to establish. There is the bulk processing that happens. But one thing you have to remember, remember at the very beginning I told you that there's a lot of variables that you have to use. So there's also cursor variables. When you're having a recursive process and you're going to be consistently bringing information, the cursor itself has to have variables that are going to be used with the cursor. So the cursor has variables that are going to be used. So you have the uh, declare section where you itemize the cursor, you have the open, you have the looping mechanism, you close the loop and you close the, 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 the cursor. You have the variables that you have to consider, and then you have the exceptions that are predefined because you have common mistakes, and then you have the output of that item, and then you also have to address those items that are not known. And that's how that cursor works. So that concludes the process.